Welcome to the Educational Physics Podcast. I am your host, João Figueiredo. This podcast is all about education, pedagogy, mindset, and uh, really any other nonsense that I think about during the week. Enjoy. This is episode 9 of the Educational Physics Podcast. This is quite a different episode as it compiles three videos that I made on the play in our heads. This is still an ongoing series and uh, these three videos were recorded over the time span of two years. Hence why I look quite different. This series intends to explore the different characters that create and make up our mindscape. As I explore my own mind, and what voices I have in my head, dictating my life. I hope you enjoy, and if you do, please subscribe, like, and share. Thank you. You are not your thoughts. Most of us feel that the voice inside our heads is us talking. But that's not necessarily the case. And that's why you have often conflicting thoughts. People say that it's impossible to hold opposing thoughts in your head simultaneously. Those people are not very self-aware. You are not only capable of that, you are mostly a victim of that most of the time. Your brain is constantly scanning your surroundings for reasons as to why you shouldn't be in danger. And it creates these stories in the form of your voice. It's almost as if there are parts of your brain who are impersonating you. Which is why it's so convincing. You hear your voice in your head, so you assume these are my thoughts on this. Not necessarily. You see there's a play in your head. Every day, every night, multiple actors come on stage. And they battle each other. One of those actors might be playing fear. Someone else is playing ego and bravado. Someone else is playing a representation of your childhood and what you felt in relation to your parents and your relatives when you were small. Someone else is playing the executive, the person who takes care of business, the person who makes strategic decisions. Someone else might be playing the artist, the hippie, the person who just wants to mess around. How are these not opposing thoughts? They are. These are the voices that battle each other for more holidays and more money and more work, more free time. More family time, but also more responsibility. More love, but more isolation. More attention with more independence. We all feel these things. And that play in your head is what makes it so difficult to make decisions. The first step is to acknowledge that you have that play in your head. The first step is to realize and acknowledge and accept and respect the fact that your thoughts are not you. You are one of them. Your notion of self is there, in the middle, trying to find the answers. All these other voices, however, they play a different role. They are options. The problem is when we feel like those voices are directly attached to our notion of self and we are not capable of separating them from who we are and who we can be. Then we get stuck because we get confused and overwhelmed and we maybe even question our own sanity. The way you should look at this is very simple. Those voices are multiple different scenarios. They provide you with information as to what would happen if you were to listen to them. So let's say for example you are in a relationship and you have a fear of abandonment. So maybe you react badly whenever your partner need some time alone. Quite simply, what you need to do 
is to listen to that voice as if it's someone else and then advise that voice. If that voice is telling you like, no, I, she can't go out, I don't like this, I feel really strange about it all. Okay, listen to that voice as if it were a friend. And that friend is stressed out, maybe a bit jealous, maybe a bit insecure. But talk to that friend. Don't assume that your friend's voices are your own voice. Instead, listen and then advise. You will almost immediately be able to discuss those ideas with yourself and find some sort of common ground, some sort, some sort of calming place inside yourself. That conversation can go as simply as this. Why are you jealous? Why are you insecure? Why are you fearful of abandonment? And then you might realize that this has nothing to do with that person. Or maybe it does. Maybe this person has hurt you in the past. Maybe you need to move on. Maybe you guys need to talk. Maybe you need to talk. But what's really important is that you understand that all these actors are not against you. They are not necessarily an enemy. But rather your brain's ability and skill to generate all these different scenarios that allow you to see your world, your life, your reality, the future, through different channels, different lenses. And that's something that humans are incredibly skilled at doing. The problem is that sometimes we are not aware that we are doing that. And we are not educated when it comes to the way the brain operates and uh, works out reality. Maybe you've heard the, the expression perception is reality. But maybe you didn't really dig deep enough into what that sentence means. Fundamentally, your voices can manifest themselves in reality by means of perception. If you don't separate yourself from those voices, if you don't acknowledge that this is just a play in your head that's trying to work out how you can command and, and maneuver your reality, then you'll get stuck in your head. That's the other expression, isn't it? Get out of your own head. You see, popular wisdom is quite useful. The issue is that we often overlook it. These popular sayings, these expressions, these proverbs, they're very powerful. If I were you, I would listen. And I would ask questions. And I don't mean rhetorical questions. I mean questions that need an answer. And ask those voices questions. You'll be surprised by how quickly they will give an answer. And also how quickly they lose that power over you. Once you see them for what they are, actors, playing characters, then you'll realize that this is just fiction. None of it needs to be real up until you act it out. All those voices can manifest themselves. That's fine. They only become real the moment you act on them. The moment that you too Embrace the character they are playing. And that's your choice. Because you get to choose how you think and how you think about what you think. And you definitely get to choose how you act on it. Good luck. There are different characters inside your head that play different roles in who you are, how you operate, how you behave. It is fundamental that you understand these characters, that you interact with them, and that you empathize as to why they exist. First and foremost, you have to understand that the reason why you behave differently depending on circumstances and why you even get triggered and 
It has nothing to do with you being sensitive or crazy or like someone told me recently so if I'm a perfectionist that means I'm not mentally ill, right? I truly empathize with everyone who thinks they are somewhat dysfunctional you're actually not most of you are perfectly functional and these characters are actually very adaptive what you have to understand is that they come from a place of experience some of these characters play the role of protective defensive offensive but all of them really are there to make sure that you're safe one of my characters is the antagonist the contrarian so this is a part of me that behaves in a way that keeps me safe from taking chances starting new relationships or even starting new hobbies we have to first understand why that is the antagonist some people see that part of themselves as a saboteur or just someone or a voice <clears throat> that uh, keeps everyone and everything at bay that antagonist exists because in the past you've been hurt maybe you took on a new hobby and you felt out of place like you couldn't do it maybe you enter the relationship and you got badly hurt or the last time you tried to change careers you went financially so bad that now you're both scared of taking professional chances and you might even be scared of spending money on yourself because you have this scarcity syndrome now that part of you is not wrong in playing that role that's perfectly okay it's its job so how can you interact with that while still taking chances starting new relationships taking on new hobbies well you have to have a conversation with that part of you you have to interact with it what that means is that whenever it pops up you have to ask the question why are you here today? What is it in this situation that makes you feel like we need to walk away? What is it in this situation that makes you feel like you have to say no? Without even weighing the possibility that it might be fun. Maybe you're scared that we will look like fools? What if we do? Maybe you're scared that I'm gonna get hurt again? But if I do, you have to have confidence in your strength because, hey, you're still here watching this video, so you must have survived. Now it's time to claim some of that power back and soothe your contrarian. Tell that voice that right now you don't need it. Right now you want to take a chance. Right now maybe you even want to embrace the fool it is important that you allow yourself to experiment and interact with these different parts of you there are many and we can have conversations with multiple of these at the same time it is important to understand why they exist like I said where they came from if you can but more importantly, it's important to empathize with them, understand that they are there to fulfill a certain role. They're trying to protect you. But you are powerful enough to take on new challenges and understand the potential consequences, both positive and negative, because you've grown, you've learned from your experiences, and you don't need a bodyguard. So if you have this part of you, in you talking 
keeping people at bay, keeping new professional opportunities at a distance. That's merely because you're scared of not fulfilling those expectations. In a relationship, you want to be loved and love and be a good partner. You're scared that you might not be up to it, that you might not be healed enough yet. That might be true. In the professional realm, you might be scared of success, which is very common. Because success breeds expectations, once again. When it comes to investing in yourself, you might be scared of running out of money again. I get it. But you need to have those conversations with yourself. You need to accept that you've learned your lessons. You've understood what went wrong the last time. You hopefully even journaled about it, you spoke to people about it, maybe you even uh, spoke to a therapist about it. You're allowing yourself to move on and grow up. The voices will slowly calm down and give you the space to grow. Good luck. The play in our heads is more complex than what we want to accept. Most of us just want to go about our lives without really digging too deep into who we are and why we are who we are and how we operate the way we do and how we can break certain patterns. But if we do start to dig deep and if life throws at you enough curveballs and enough obstacles and enough enemies you will start to realize that there are parts of you that are acting according to their own principles, which is why we so often live in internal conflict. If life really challenges you, you might just break down. And a lot of us react to this very differently. Some of us repress, some of us project and we blame others for what's happening to us. Some of us get angry, resentful. Some of us just indulge until uh, we are numb enough to forget what took us, what brought us to that bottomless pit. But even in those dark times, as we try to escape and evade what's really happening to us, what's really out there, we know. And if you decide to make a change in your life, if you decide to break cycles and start a new you are leaving parts of you behind. This is what we will call the exiled. These are parts of you who are no longer needed. Maybe you've repressed them. Maybe you one day tried to look in the mirror and couldn't because that part of you that was destructive, painful, egoic, that part of you was right there looking at you through your eyes so you avoid the stare you avoid the gaze because you know you're done with that you must be done with that you must let go you must destroy that part of you that's holding you back and hurting others and so you start anew you start fresh and and in theory, that's a great move. If you are hurting, if you are hurting other people around you, you have to do something about it. Or you'll end up living a short life with a lot of misery. 
If you want a long life full of joy, fulfillment and accomplishments and happiness, then those parts of you must be excommunicated. They must go. The problem is, this exiled won't go anywhere. It will just become dormant. Overpowered by other parts of you that will be more behavior oriented. So you'll act against the urges. If you're trying to quit something, quit an addiction, that could be a pattern of behavior or could be a chemical addiction. You need to act against that. You will want to indulge. You will want to go back to the repetitive patterns that you're familiar with. The only way to counter that is by literally counteract. So you act against the pattern. And by doing so enough times, you create a new pattern. But what happens to the initial pattern, the destructive one, that caused all the pain? It doesn't just dissolve itself inside your being. It becomes a part of you that one day will require attention. And it will require care. So then you can truly let go of that element of you, that part of you, that voice in your head that caused all the trouble in the past. Then you might find yourself scared to take certain chances because you will be worried that you might trigger that part. If you're someone who who's struggled with ego and egoic decisions and you're stubborn and you maybe insist a bit too much on doing things a certain way to the point of diminishing returns, then as you transform yourself to be a more open-minded person, more empathetic, more um, engaged with others in the world, you might find yourself struggling to make certain decisions that would protect you because you might be worried that you're triggering that old ego. You might then start to struggle to take care of yourself properly because you might be worried as to what that motivation is. Where does it come from? So. If you're facing that, if you're facing that fear to take a chance again because of the fear to go back to old patterns, I want to say two things. One, it's good that you're scared. You should be. You should be careful. And that's a signal that your brain is sending you that fear that we're not comfortable in this new role yet. We don't know what our motivations are yet. Yes, we are acting differently. Yes, we are maybe even thinking differently most of the time. But then there are certain situations where you realize that maybe now I'm calling or summoning old demons. If I start to pursue indulgence, is that self-care or is that ego? Then you need to go back inside. And you need to go back inside and find that exiled. That part of you that you couldn't look in the mirror. You need to tell that part of you that she's okay to go. She's done her job. She kept you safe. She did the best she could to help you navigate some uncharted waters. But you've both now realized that this is now out of her depth. And that's okay. As it goes with children, teenagers, adults. We all must evolve. We all, we all must grow up. That's the story of life. Time doesn't stop for you. You better get in front of it. Transcend that humanity of yours. Focus on what you can do for others first. And you will be able to override their ego. You don't have to use ego to let go of others, for example. You don't have to use ego to let go of others who, who have hurt you in the past. You can use love and kindness. Appreciate that they did the best they could, even if it was the worst for you. Appreciate that even when people are being mean, 
They're hurting. They are hurting. And you don't need to use ego to take care of yourself either. You don't need to use ego to motivate yourself to be successful. You can use motivations based on serving others. So go inside. Speak to that exiled part of you. The one that disappointed you so badly that you completely disowned it. Go back there. Go inside. Go deep. It's gonna hurt. But you must do it if you want to really fully embody these new parts of you that are pushing you towards the goals you want to achieve, the relationships that you want to have, the feelings and emotions that you want to experience. Without that conversation, you will always be in this struggle between who you want to be and the person you couldn't look in the mirror anymore. Safe travels.